And the leaders are there, say amen. amen. God bless every one of you. I thought you even say a better amen on that one. Tonight we come for our leadership development. And I pray that every one of us, brother, sister, leader in every section, will grow on to perfection in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for the moment we spend before you. And we thank you tonight because you are coming to touch every life. Turn us around. Make us the leaders we ought to be. With courage, with boldness, with firmness, earnestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints in Jesus' name. And through every one of us, brother, sister, we pray that multitudes will come into the kingdom, remain in the kingdom, and our work will abide in Jesus' name. And we reward everyone as we labor faithfully in your sight in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 8, and I'm reading one verse there, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished, Moses was commanded of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for see says he says the Lord that thou make all things according to the pattern should be in the mount as students of the Bible we know that Moses spent 40 days in the sight of the Lord on the mount not eating, not drinking anything, fasting and waiting with the Lord for those 40 days. And now God said, you go back to the people and you raise up and you rear up a tabernacle where I will dwell with you. And I've shown you the pattern on the mount. It's the heavenly pattern. As you go back to the people, you will make all things in that tabernacle according to what you have seen, the pattern you have seen on the mount. God is the author and the finisher of Israel's redemption. As you think about Israel's redemption, Moses wasn't the source. He wasn't the foundation. God himself is the foundation as well as the originator of that redemption. The covenant had been made, and the covenant had been sealed, and the covenant had been ratified with Abraham before Moses was born, before Moses was called, before Moses was commissioned. Israel's tabernacle worship was planned and given from heaven. The pattern was to be revealed from heaven and having the origin and the substance the foundation in heaven none on earth could change none on earth should change none on earth should modify it and so Moses was commanded go make all things according to the heavenly pattern and thank god moses did he did everything he instructed the children of israel and the children of israel too they cooperated with him and he did everything according to that heavenly pattern as we look at that verse tonight going through all that is revealed in scripture concerning the work of god and the ministry he has committed into our hands the topic tonight is total commitment to the vision of the heavenly pattern. That's a pattern. It's a heavenly pattern. 
And then the Lord has shown the vision. And the Lord already has revealed that this is the way. This is the method. This is what you do. And Moses was commanded and is commanding us too. That we do all things. Literally all things. All things in ministry according to that heavenly pattern. The commitment to the vision of the heavenly pattern. As we look at this, we come to Acts chapter 7. Acts of the Apostles chapter 7, reading from verse 44. It says in verse 44, Our fathers at the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make each according to the fashion that he had seen. You see that? It's bringing that from the Old Testament. And then the application when the Lord called all the apostles. Look at the commission it was given. And look at the commandment it was given. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 26. Reading from verse 19. It says, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. He also had a pattern, heavenly pattern, revealed from on high and revealed from the Lord. And he said, I kept to that. I held on to that. I did it according to the heavenly pattern. And he said, King Agrippa, I have not been disobedient or rebellious. I have not walked contrary to the heavenly vision. Verse 20, but should first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throw out all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent that's a pattern heavenly pattern as we come to gospel penetration as we come into ministering the word of God it says first of all I told them I related to them that vision I had from God himself that they should turn to God and do works meet for repentance it tells us in galatians chapter one paul the apostle relating about his ministry he too had the pattern and he had it from the lord and he said this is what i do i didn't get this from my just like moses did not get the pattern of the tabernacle from any man or from his past experience or education he got it from the lord and here paul the apostle says in galatians chapter one reading from verse 11 Galatians chapter 1 verse 11 but I certify you I want to assure you brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not at a man then he says in verse 12 for I neither received it of man neither was I taught it but by the revelation of Jesus Christ and you know Jesus had died had been buried had risen from the dead and ascended to heaven before Paul the apostle was converted on the road to Damascus and the Lord called him Saul Saul and he looked up and he said here am I Lord who are you and Jesus said I am Jesus whom you persecute and he said what shall I do and the Lord told him what to do and now he says the revelation of the gospel and the revelation of this new covenant i got it directly from the lord it's an heavenly pattern I want to remind ourselves that god is the originator of the redemption of mankind the totality of humanity to be redeemed to be saved and to know the lord and to follow the lord and to have the grace to remain righteous until the final end and then get to heaven the whole plan was made by the lord himself and we know that from the foundation of the world even before the foundation of the world this plan had been in the heart of god from all eternity and christ is the author and the finisher of our faith God's final revelation to mankind. What Moses uh, was commanded is reaching for our learning. Moses was commanded, do all things, 
make all things according to the pattern which was shown to you on the mount that was reaching for our learning. Come to Romans chapter 15. In Romans chapter 15, reading from verse 4, it says, For whatsoever things, whatsoever things were reaching aforetime, were reaching for our learning. And what we are reading today about Moses, about the commandment he received from the Lord, about that commission he received from the Lord, that he will make all things, not the majority of things, all things, literally all things, according to the pattern shown him on the mount, that was reaching aforetime. And it's reaching for our learning. And it says that we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. We're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. This particular about Israel and about Moses. Look at verse 2. It says, And they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Look at verse 6. Now these things were for our examples to the intent. We should not lost after evil things as they also lost it. That is, uh, all that was reaching, as you think about Moses and Israel crossing over through, through the wilderness onto the land of Canaan, all the things that happened to them, and the commandment given to Moses, reaching for a land. Look at verse 11. Now, all these things happened unto them. For examples, and they are reaching for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. It's telling us that uh, there are lessons to learn from everything that took place in the wilderness, everything that took place in the past, every record and every revelation that God gave to the children of Israel at that time. It says, even to the end of the world, all these things are reaching for our learning we come to first corinthians chapter 9 first corinthians chapter 9 the first part of verse 10 or says he each altogether for our sakes is talking about what was revealed in the old testament and is asking is it for our sake is it for ministers today is it for the church today it says for our sakes no doubt this is reaching. And what we are considering in particular tonight, for our sakes, no doubt, this is reaching. Hebrews chapter 1. In Hebrews chapter 1, we are reading from verse 1. See what the Lord is now telling us. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. It says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past, unto the fathers by the prophets as in these last days spoken unto us by his son how do you understand that it's saying that in the old testament the almighty god spoke to the fathers he spoke to the children of israel he spoke to those elders by the prophets he sent the prophets unto them but now in these last days he's speaking to us by the son he gives us the final message the final revelation and the heavenly pattern now comes through the lord jesus christ he has in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things and by whom also he made the walls Come back to chapter 8 of Hebrews, verse 5. Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God, that he was, when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, it says, Moses, watch out for this, 
see this one make sure that you endeavor and you keep yourself to the pattern i've shown you on the mount see saith he that thou make how many things tell me if you are there that thou make all things he didn't leave anything to you know his own uh, thought his own mind his own will his own choice his own opinion his own likings his own desires it says i've shown you the pattern i've shown you the revelation i've given you the picture make sure that you do all things make all things according to the pattern should be should to be in the mount tonight total commitment to the vision of the heavenly pattern total complete unwavering commitment to the vision of the heavenly pattern there are three things we're looking at number one the command to make all things according to the heavenly pattern the command to make all things according to the heavenly pattern number two the condemnation for mutilating the heavenly pattern meddling with the heavenly pattern messing up the heavenly pattern mishandling the heavenly pattern the condemnation for mutilating the heavenly pattern number three the consecration of maintaining the heavenly pattern the commitment he wants from us the consecration he wants from us the devotion he wants from us the dedication he wants from us that we will understand the heavenly pattern had been given from above and like moses committed himself like the children of israel committed themselves we too were to commit ourselves to the heavenly pattern we have got from the lord jesus christ the consecration of maintaining the heavenly pattern number one what's number one on your side over there the command to make all things according to the heavenly pattern we're back to hebrews chapter 8 hebrews chapter 8 we're looking at verse 5 who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as moses was admonished of god when he was about to make the tabernacle for sea saith he that thou make all things according to the pattern should be in the mount and let us see the original reference to that when god told moses and how god made sure that moses understood the heavenly pattern saw the heavenly pattern examined the heavenly pattern and it was to go back to the midst of the children of israel and make all things according to that heavenly pattern exodus chapter 25 we're reading from verses 8 and 9 exodus chapter 25 verse 8 and let them make me a sanctuary that i may dwell among them you see the purpose for the tabernacle the almighty god says i want to dwell among them and i'm showing you moses the kind of place i want to dwell in the kind of habitation i want to have i'm showing you moses the kind of place i live in heaven and this is the heavenly pattern and says i want to come and make my habitation with you and dwell among you here is the heavenly pattern go and replicate that go and produce that reproduce that and it says in that verse let them make a sanctuary that i may dwell among them look at verse 9 according that's important according to all that i showed thee he didn't leave it in the hands of an angel to show him 
The Almighty God said, Moses, I myself, the Almighty, I showed you according to all that I showed thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. Even so shall ye make it. Look at verse 40 there in that same chapter. And look, here is God still instructing him. After giving him, showing him the pattern, and showing him all the instruments in that tabernacle, and he says, and look that thou make them after, the, after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount, which was showed thee in the mount. Come to chapter 26, and we're reading from verse 30. Chapter 26, verse 30. And thou shalt rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof which was showed thee in the mount. The Lord kept on repeating and the Lord kept on emphasizing and the Lord kept on reminding him before he left that mount those 40 days and was going to the children of Israel was coming with a pattern, was coming with a picture, was coming with the heavenly pattern in his mind. This was very important and the Lord kept on emphasizing and repeating. Look at chapter 27. I'm reading from verse 8. Chapter 27, verse 8. Hollow with birds shalt thou make it as it was showed thee in the mount as it was showed thee in the mount so shall they make it and the lord is still reminding us as we come here for leadership development the things that are revealed to us the heavenly pattern how the work is to be done how the ministry is to be carried out every detail of what the lord has called us to in the great commission and teaching the church and helping the church and raising the church and developing the church and maturing the church and perfecting the church he has showed us this is like on the mount and he gives us the revelation and he says go back to your people and go back to the congregation and make sure that every Everything is done according to the pattern that it should be in the mount. Let's look at um, Acts of the Apostles chapter 7. Acts of the Apostles chapter 7. There are three verses we're looking at there. And I want you to see the sequence of those verses. I want you to see the beginning and then the next one and then the next one. One, two, three. We're looking at chapter 7 of Acts and we're reading from verse 22. Acts of the Apostles chapter 7 verse 22. Acts of the Apostles chapter 7 verse 22. I'm waiting for you. Are you there? It says, and Moses was, tell me, learning in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. And it was mighty in words and in deeds. Before the Lord called Moses, he was already educated. And you know that Egypt was one of the four civilizations in the whole world. And their kind of education in architecture, in engineering, and in geology, and in history, and in every area was above the education, educational system in any other nation at that time. And Moses was not just educated ordinarily, he had royal education. That is, they were preparing him to take over and be a prince and be a king in Egypt. That's why it says in that verse 22, And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in words and in deeds. That's first. The second verse, we're looking at verse 38. It was after that education, it was after that instruction, it was after that professional training that the call now came to Moses. Verse 38, this is he that was in the church, in the assembly, in the wilderness, with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. And uh, with our fathers who received the lively oracles to 
give unto us. Already, number one, he had education, the highest form of education anybody could have at that time. Educated more than the ordinary Egyptians because he was given a royal education. And then after that, his call came. Now look at verse 44. After all that, our fathers at the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to his education, his training, his background, his experience. No, it says according to the fashion that he had seen. God commanded Moses, and Moses obeyed in all details. Though Moses was learned, well instructed in royal education, the highest in his day, he obeyed God. He did not alter the heavenly pattern. He did not modify the heavenly pattern. He did not vary the heavenly pattern. He did not allow his education, his training, his professional background to conflict with the heavenly pattern. He did not refashion the heavenly pattern. He did not set aside the heavenly pattern. I know better than this. I can construct something better than this. I can do something more stable than this tabernacle. How is God telling me that I make a tabernacle like this? From my experience, I can refashion this one. I can remodel this one. I can set this one aside and do something better. He did not humanize the heavenly pattern. That is, bring it to the human level and give it human element and throw this in, add this one, subtract this one, and change that. He did not replace the heavenly pattern. God commended him and rewarded him not for cleverness, but for faithfulness. There are people that try to show that they are clever in serving the lord in the things of the lord god did not reward moses for his cleverness he was rewarded for his faithfulness god did not re a reward him for his willfulness but he was rewarded for his willingness god did not re uh, god did not uh, kind of uh, reward him for his defiance but he was rewarded for his compliance because he complied with what the Lord had told him. That's why he was rewarded. It's not because he was wayward. For his waywardness, he was rewarded for his faithfulness. Uh, let's come back to Exodus chapter 39. And let us see the things that actually happened after the Lord had commanded him. And then he came back and he was to rear up, to raise up that tabernacle. We're looking at Exodus chapter 39, reading from verse 32. Exodus chapter 39, verse 32. Remember the covenant and remember the commission, remember the commandment that he had been given. And now we're going to see how Moses did it. And what he actually did, it says in Exodus 39, verse 32, Thus was all the work of the tabernacle, of the, tent, of the tent, of the congregation finished. And the children of Israel did, tell me, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did they. So did they they didn't try to be clever they didn't try to be defiant they didn't try to contradict the pattern the heavenly pattern the almighty god had given them look at verse 42 of that same chapter 39 according to all that the lord commanded moses according to all they didn't subtract they didn't add they didn't modify they didn't change according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So the children of Israel made all the work. And that's what he expects of us in everything we do. From the house fellowship to the local church to the central church to every section of the work. 
everything he has revealed from Jesus Christ his final revelation to man how we worship how we preach what we preach how we pray what we do how we handle the watch of God how we bring sinners into the kingdom how we develop those converts and raise up those converts disciple them how we choose the workers how we train the workers everything that we are to do it says in that verse 42 according to all that the lord commanded moses so the children of israel made all the work verse 42 43 and moses did look upon all the work moses did look upon all the work and a word for that is supervision because they didn't have the pattern they didn't have the blueprint he had the blueprint he had the heavenly pattern and because he had the heavenly pattern as he had given them instruction he didn't abdicate leadership he didn't abandon his role as a leader as they were doing it he was looking at it to make sure that it is according to the pattern that he had been given on the mount and so he says and moses did look upon all the work and behold they had done it as the lord had commanded even so had they done it and moses blessed them and as you are faithful the lord will bless you he has blessed you already say i am blessed look at chapter 40 exodus chapter 40 i'm reading from verse 16. look at this it says thus did moses according to all that the lord commanded him so did he isn't it a wonderful thing that the man did not allow the pride of education the pride of good upbringing and the pride of knowledge and the pride of being higher than all the other younger younger uh, israelites and the pride of being trained in a royal place isn't it wonderful he didn't allow that pride to get between him and god everything the lord had revealed unto him he said it says he had thus did moses according to all that the lord commanded him so did he and look at the conclusion of the new testament concerning him we're looking at hebrews chapter 3 hebrews chapter 3 we're reading from verse 2 hebrews chapter 3 verse 2 who was faithful to him that appointed him as also moses was faithful tell me in all his house I pray that will be written concerning you. That your record in heaven will be that you are faithful. You are faithful to the word of God. You are faithful to the ministry of the word. You are faithful to the calling the Lord has given you. And in every detail, you are not saying this one is not enough. Let me add my education. Let me add my background. Let me add my opinion. Let me add my understanding. Let me prove myself clever that I'm not just going to remain with everything they are saying. I'm going to be more clever than that. That's not faithfulness. That's not faithfulness. It says that as also Moses was faithful in all his house we're coming to first corinthians chapter 4 first corinthians chapter 4 we're reading from verse 2 first corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 it says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful it's required in leaders that a man be found faithful. It's required in preachers that a man be found faithful. It's required in pastors that a man be found faithful. It's required in a worker, a person that says, the Lord has called me and I'm doing the work of God. It is required in all the workers that a man, a woman be found faithful. I pray God will find you faithful. I say God will find you faithful. Second Corinthians, I'm reading from chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 1. Therefore, seeing 
we have this ministry. He called us. We have this ministry. He has commanded us. We have this ministry. He has commissioned us. We have this ministry. Seen. We have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not. You will not faint. You will not be tired. You will not retire. Somebody there wants to retire. But you, I said, you will not retire. Yeah. Have you noticed that Moses, until the very last day spent on earth, he was still at it. He was still at it. Faithful, faithful. And following the Lord and doing everything as the Lord had told him. Not only the tabernacle, the Lord told him to appoint Joshua. He did. He was faithful. The Lord told him what to do with Aaron. He was faithful. The Lord told him what to do with the Levites. He was faithful. The Lord told him the watch and the law. He was to write down. He was faithful. What to commit to the hands of those people in everything and every detail. He was faithful until the very last day he spent on earth. And I pray that that same faithfulness will be transferred into your life in Jesus' name. You will not drag your feet. You will not be tired. You will not bring the ideas of the world. The ideas of the world. Once uh, you know you reach, uh, you know this uh, age. Are you not tired? Are you not going to retire? Are you not going to relax? Are you not going to go on, fang on vacation? Are you not going to spend the rest of your life aimlessly roaming about and not doing anything tangible in the kingdom of God? The world will not come into your mind will not come into your head but you will do the work of god and you'll be faithful to the very end in jesus name looks like i'm the only one excited in the house today look at verse 2 in verse 2 but we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of god deceitfully but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And then we come to Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 2. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men those are the people to be involved faithful men those are the people men women young people young adults and uh, youths and students faithful men faithful people we cannot commit the work of the lord into anybody's hand that is not faithful who is trying to be clever who is trying to be defiant who is trying to change uh, the heavenly pattern, who is trying to modify the heavenly pattern, who is trying to be wiser than God, who is trying to teach God what the pattern ought to be. We cannot commit anything to their hands, but to commit to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. We're looking at Titus chapter 1 verse 9. Titus chapter 1 verse 9, uh, holding fast the faithful word. Those are the people, the people that know that this is the heavenly pattern and this is the heavenly calling and they are holding fast to that faithful word as he has been taught. As he has been taught. As he has been taught that he may be able by some doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. God will keep you faithful. We're coming to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. We're reading from verse 10. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. You see what makes people unfaithful, disobedient, not keeping to the heavenly pattern is fear. They have imaginary fear. They are fearing something that does not even exist. There's a lion in the way. There are persecutors in the way. There are people who are going to kill me, destroy me if I do this. And because of that imaginary fear, or real fear, they fear men, they fear women, they fear believers, they fear unbelievers. 
They fear the people. They fear their friends. They fear their enemies. They live in fear. Because of that, they cannot stand. And they cannot say, this is the heavenly pattern, what the Lord has called us to, and we're going to do it. You'll do the will of God in Jesus' name. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not fear the fire of Nebuchadnezzar. That's how they were faithful. Daniel did not fear the lion's den. That's how he was faithful. Moses did not have the fear of the king of Egypt. When the king of Egypt said, you will not see my face anymore. He said, you said it right. I'll not see your face anymore. If we're going to be faithful, you forget about every other thing. And what you're looking at is the heavenly pattern. And as you focus your attention, you focus your mind, and you focus your dedication on that, heavenly pattern you will not fail in jesus name fear none of those six we now shall suffer behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison and that she may be tried and ye shall have tribulation trial trouble ten days but be thou tell me the word be thou tell me out aloud faithful until death unto death and i will give thee a crown of life. You will not miss your crown. Look at verse 25. But that which thou have, which ye have already, hold fast till I come. It's not, you know, like, you know, here is the heavenly pattern. We have that already. The plan of redemption. The grace of God. What leads us to godliness. What leads us to holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And it says what you have already. The commission, the calling, what the Lord has put in your hand. Hold fast until, until you are tired. Until there is persecution. Until when? Until I come. And he that overcometh, that's my name right there. I said that's my name right there. Are you the overcomer? I said, are you the overcomer? You will not draw back in Jesus' name. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. I pray the Lord will help you. We're coming to point number two now. In point number two, the condemnation for mutilating the heavenly pattern. The condemnation for mutilating the heavenly pattern. Is anyone angel or man? Anyone ancient or modern? Wiser than God? God has given the heavenly pattern. Anybody trying to model it up? Modify it? Anybody trying to change it? is proving that it's wiser than the almighty god and can you think of anyone that knows better how to worship god than god himself god says i'm the one you are worshiping i call you to worship me and i tell you this is the way to worship me and then there's a mortal man there's a dying man there's an ignorant man there's a blind man that wants to tell god it is better his own way rather than god's way have you found anybody that can tell us i'm wiser than god and i can tell god how to please god more than god himself can tell how to please him does anyone have better doctrines on salvation than Christ the Savior? Christ himself is the Savior. And he says, this is the way to get saved. And then somebody who is not the Savior, a man, a dying man, ignorant, blind man, and he says, no, this is the way of salvation. And I'm asking him, are you wiser than the Savior himself? The one who died on the cross of Calvary, and he says, this is the way to get saved. And then somebody else comes and he says, no, Christ is not right about salvation. This is how to get saved. Nobody is wiser than Christ. I said you are not wiser than Christ. Where is the man on earth who can improve the heavenly pattern? 
where is the man on earth who can know who will say he knows the way of God and the way to heaven more than God himself Christ is the way is the truth and the life and nobody knows the way to get to that glory land more than the Lord Jesus Christ can anyone teach God knowledge he is the origin of knowledge, the source of knowledge, the fountain of knowledge. And then somebody comes now and he wants to teach us knowledge that is contrary, that is different from the knowledge that God himself has revealed. All who try to meddle, all who try to modify, all who try to mess up the heavenly pattern are under severe eternal condemnation look at uh, leviticus chapter 10 leviticus chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 1 the condemnation of mutilating the heavenly pattern in leviticus chapter 10 we're reading from verse 1 and nadab and abihu the sons of aaron took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered what kind of fire strange fire before the lord which he commanded them not he knows you know what he has commanded the kind of offering to bring and the kind of fire sacred that they were to offer to the lord but now these people came and they offered what he had not commanded look at verse 2 and there went out fire from the lord and devouched them destroyed them consumed them slew them killed them and they died before the lord and moses said unto aaron their father this is it that the lord spake saying i will be sanctified i'll be hallowed i'll be respected i'll be reverenced i'll be set above everyone in them that come near me and before all the people will i be glorified and moses held his peace let's look at uh, numbers in Numbers chapter 1, reading from verse 54, and understand that this command was not just for Moses alone. It was to be passed across to all the children of Israel. And Nadab and Abihu went their own way, trying to be clever, but not faithful. Trying to be willful, but not willing. Trying to be defiant, and not compliant in uh, numbers chapter 1 verse 54 and the children of israel did according to all that the lord commanded moses so did they the children of israel they didn't say i'll go and receive my own revelation i'll go and get my own revelation moses you want them out and he gave you that pattern and he says this is what you do all right keep that to yourself i'm going to go myself to get you it says no the children of israel did according to all that the lord commanded moses so did they look at chapter 2 verse 34 chapter 2 verse 34 and the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses so they pitched by their standards and so they set forward everyone after their families according to the house of their fathers until these uh, these two uh, sons of um, Aaron came and they said no we're better than that well why said than that all the children of Israel just following after Moses and here is what he has commanded we're going to do something different the condemnation that came on those who mutilated the heavenly pattern we're coming to first Chronicles chapter 15 first Chronicles chapter 15 and I'm reading from verse 12 first Chronicles chapter 15 reading from verse 12 here it tells us in verse 12 first chronicles 
chapter 15 from verse 12 and said unto them ye chief of the fathers of the levites sanctify yourselves both ye and your brethren that she may bring up the ark of the lord god of israel unto the place that i have prepared for it this david talking to the levites and talking to the priests and talking to the people that had charge of the tabernacle worship and he said sanctify yourself prepare yourself so that you can carry the ark in the appropriate way to the place i prepared for that ark verse 13 for because ye did it not at the first the lord our god made a breach upon us for that we sought him not after the due order what's david referring to here they tried to bring the ark of the covenant to the temple to the place prepared before this time but they didn't do it according to all that god had commanded he commanded them that they will not touch the ark but uh, they will carry the ark with poles on the rings of the, on the sides on their shoulders and they'll carry it reverently they'll carry it as a sacred instrument unto the place they should carry it but he didn't do that look at that look at this i'm reading now from chapter 13. chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 1. and david consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader and david said unto all the congregation of israel if it seem good unto you that it be that and that it be of the lord our god let us send abroad to our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of israel and with them also to the priests and to the levites which are in their cities and suburbs and that they may gather themselves unto us this just consultation consultation with the people not consultation in the world as it is written as it is commanded verse 3 and let us bring again the ark of our god to us for we inquired not at it in the days of saul and all the congregations said that they would do so consultation among themselves and it says for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people there are things that are right in the eyes of all the people if we don't consult the word of god we can go astray human ingenuity will come in education will come in pride will come in opinions will come in my own background will come in your own background will come in so verse 5 david gathered all israel together from Sheha of egypt even unto the entering of amos to bring the ark of god from kedges and david went up and all israel unto Bela that she is to Kedges Jerim would belong to Judah to bring up this the ark of God the Lord that dwelleth between the cherubims whose name is called on it and the carriage here is it now and the carriage the ark of God in a new cart that was not according to the word of God do it according to all that I showed thee on the mount. And Moses had written all that down. And what he should have done is to say, what's written to carry the ark of God and to take it from this place to that place? How should it be done? No, they didn't consult the word of God. They consulted among themselves. What do you think? What do you feel? How do you think we should do this? What's your advice? What's your opinion? Tell me your background. Tell me your experience. And they carried the ark of God in a new cart out of the house of Abinadab. And Uzzah and Ahio 
drive the cart. And Moses and all, and David and all Israel played before God with all their might and with singing and with harps and with subtries and with timbrels and with cymbals and with the trumpets. And when they came onto the thresh floor of China, Uzzah put forth his sand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. The oxen shouldn't have been involved at all, because they ought to carry it on their shoulders with poles. And then it says, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and he smote him. Because he put his sand to the ark, and there he died before God. You see, because they didn't follow after the due order. That's what is uh, being referred to. Come back now to chapter 15. In chapter 15 uh, of First Chronicles, I'm reading from verse 13. For because ye did it not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us. For that we sought him not after the due order. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves. That's what they should have done before. To bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. And the children of the Levites bear the ark of God. Tell me. Upon their shoulders not with carts and oxen upon their shoulders with the staves thereon as can you tell me that as everybody moses commanded according to the word of the lord you see after they lost that life of Uza, then they went to the word of god what has god commanded that's the very first thing to check up so that we do things as the Lord had commanded. We're coming to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 7. In Jeremiah chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 7, reading from verse 23. And this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. Walk ye in all the ways, all the ways, all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels of the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets daily rising up and early sending them. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but they hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. And then in verse 27, therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call them, but they will not answer thee, but thou shalt say, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, the last, uh, the last two lines there, verse 31, which I commanded them not, neither came each into my mind, neither came each into my heart. The Lord said, look at these children of Israel. The things I have commanded, that one they abandoned. That one they threw away. That one they will not obey. The things I have not commanded. And they say they are worshipping me. They say they are offering this to me. And they say we are here to serve the Lord. And the things I have not commanded. That's the one they are doing. And the things that never even entered into my heart. That's what they are doing. That's why the condemnation came upon them. I pray condemnation will not come upon us. We will do the right thing. I will do the work of God as he has commanded in Jesus' name. 
are looking at Malachi chapter 2 verse 9. Malachi chapter 2. And I'm reading to you from verse 9. In verse 9 it says, Malachi chapter 2 verse 9. It says, Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all people according as ye have not kept my ways but have been partial in the law and they were picking and choosing i like this i will do that one i don't accept this one i will not carry out that one i don't appreciate this one this will make somebody unpopular i will not do that one this will make us different from the canaanites and will make us different from the rest of the world we're not going to do that one they were picking and choosing they were partial in the law and uh, it came to the new testament and as we preach the gospel we come to second corinthians chapter two second corinthians chapter 2 reading from verse 17 second corinthians chapter 2 reading from verse 17 it says but we are not as many which corrupt the word of god in the days of paul the apostle at the time of paul the apostle there were many many preachers and these many preachers they were not preaching according to the revelation of christ the word of redemption the word of salvation and the way the narrow way that leads to heaven they were not emphasizing that they were mutilating the heavenly pattern and they were changing the heavenly pattern and paul the apostle said there are many there are many but we're not following after them you'll not follow after many to do evil in jesus name for we are not as many which corrupt the word of god but as of sincerity but as of God, in the sight of God, we we'll speak in Christ. We're looking at Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1. But there were, there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you false teachers among you that he is teachers that will not look at the heavenly pattern teachers that will not even read the bible thoroughly to understand teachers that will not look at the word of redemption and the plan of redemption and the plan of salvation and keep to the word of god it says there'll be false, there are false prophets among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately privily slyly and uh, in a secret manner and in a very uh, kind of surreptitious manner they will bring in damnable heresies even denying the lord that bought them bought them they were saved they were purchased they were redeemed they were converted they were bought they were purchased by the blood of the lamb and they knew the lord in the past but now they will they bring in their own cleverness their own ideas and they say they don't want to do everything as it is revealed in the world as if they have a different heaven to carry people to as if god is going to give them a license that okay preach whatever you want to preach whoever you recommend you can bring them to heaven as if god is going to accept that they are wiser than himself that they are stronger than himself and they're going to teach the almighty knowledge and they're going to reveal the truth to the one that is the originator of the truth it says they will deny the lord that bought them and bring upon themselves what did they bring upon themselves sweet destruction and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of and through covetousness they shall uh, they, they, uh, through covetousness shall they with faint words pretending words sugar-coated words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time uh, lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not look at verse 19 while they promise them liberty 
They promise freedom. They promise liberty. And they promise, you know, you can do whatever you want. Grace is there. They promise them because they turn the grace of God to lasciviousness. It says, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome. Of the same is he brought in bondage. Verse 20. For if after they have escaped from the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein. They were saved, but now they are entangled in corruption, they are entangled in pollution, they are entangled in sin, in evil. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning look at verse 21 for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known each to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them that's the heavenly pattern that's the heavenly pattern the holy commandment delivered unto them they turn away from that and then they begin to preach other things and but it is happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is turned to some vomit again and the soul the swine the pig that was washed to a wallowing in the mire I pray that will not happen to you. It will not happen to me. I say it will not happen to me. Say for yourself, it will not happen to me. You will not go the way of perdition, pollution, and eternal judgment in Jesus' name. There's condemnation for those who try to modify, change, alter, deface, mistreat, misinterpret the heavenly vision point number three the consecration of maintaining the heavenly pattern if there's anything we need to consecrate ourselves to as the lord has favored us and the lord has called us and has given us this great commission and has given us this heavenly pattern and he says go and reveal that to people go and proclaim that to people and go and emphasize to the people how they can turn away from sin how they can turn to the savior how they will have real connection with the almighty reconciled unto the lord and abide in the lord until the end of their lives and when he has given us that heavenly commandment he wants us to abide and he wants us to do all things according to what was revealed on the mount we're coming to hebrews chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 5 hebrews chapter 8 verse 5 who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as moses was admonished of god when he was about to make the tabernacle for see says he that thou make once again tell me all things according to the pattern should to thee in the mount according to the pattern should to thee in the mount do you know that's what god always does if he wants something to be built to, to to the glory of his name he reveals the pattern and then he gives the pattern to the one that is going to execute it first chronicles chapter 28 First Chronicles chapter 28. We're reading from verse 11. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 11. Then Moses gave to Solomon, his son, the pattern of the porch and of the house thereof and of the treasuries thereof and of the upper chambers thereof and of the inner palace thereof and of the place of the mercy seat and the pattern of all that he had by the Spirit. The Lord gave David a pattern. It's the heavenly pattern. And he had it by the Spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord, and of all the chambers round about, and of the treasuries of the house of God, and of the treasuries of the dedicated things. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, all this, said David, 
the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me. Solomon, all this I'm delivering to you. All this I'm giving you. The Lord himself made me understand in writing by his hand upon me even all the works of this pattern. And David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and of good courage and do it, fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. You didn't say amen to that? Amen. As you keep to the heavenly pattern, the God of heaven will be with you. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. See what God has done. He gave it to, Sol he gave it to uh, Moses, and he gave it to the ch children of Israel. And now he gave this to David. And David gave it to Solomon, and he said, Solomon, yes, you are wise. Don't let your wisdom conflict with this, Solomon. You're clever. Don't let your cleverness conflict with this one. Solomon, you have experience. Don't let your experience, your humanity, don't let it conflict with this one. Here is a pattern. I got it from the Spirit of the Lord, even in writing all the details. And you will keep to that. And that's the gospel the Lord has given us. And he wants us to stay with that pattern. It tells us in Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24, reading from verse 21. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King. And meddle not with them that are given to change. The people that take a license for liberty. And the people that, you know, they come to the pulpit and the Bible is there. They will not read the Bible. Maybe they read one verse of the Bible and then they fly off. And whatever they want to say, they read in the newspapers, they saw on the internet, or they saw this one and saw this one, or they've got some new vocabulary they want to throw across to the congregation. That's all. They just, just leave the Bible aside and then they go off and change. It says, my son, you're a preacher, you're a pastor, you're a shepherd, you're a Christian worker, you're a Christian leader, and the Lord has called you, and he gave us the heavenly pattern. It says, my son, fear thou the Lord, and fear the king. You see the problem? There are people that do not regard any man, and they do not fear God. But if we're going to do the work of God successfully, you must fear God and you must fear the king. I'll come back to Proverbs, but I want to read a verse to you in Luke. Uh, turn your Bible uh, now to Luke. I want to make you see this important verse of Scripture. It tells us uh, over here in uh, Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. I'm reading from verse uh, I'm reading from verse 2. It says in verse 2 saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God neither regarded man. That's a dangerous situation. When there's a worker he doesn't fear God he doesn't regard man. He doesn't fear God he doesn't regard any leadership. Nobody can correct him. Nobody can talk to him. Nobody can say why is this? Why is that? It doesn't have regard for anybody. It doesn't recognize pastor. It doesn't recognize leader. It doesn't recognize sexual leader. Does not regard anybody and does not fear God. Such people will be acting anyhow, anyway. They cannot touch me. I don't fear them. They cannot correct me. I don't regard them. And here we have the judge that does not, he did not fear God. He did not regard man. Come back to Proverbs chapter 24. And we're looking at verse 21. My son fear thou the Lord and the king and meddle not of them that are given to change. You'll not be a partner to hypocrites. You'll not be a partner to those who meddle with the word of God. You'll not be a partner with those who change, mutilate the word of God in Jesus' name. 
you'll be committed to this word the Lord has given us and you will not take law into your hand and then just do anyhow it says in verse 22 for their calamity shall rise suddenly and who knoweth the ruin of them both we're coming to Galatians chapter 1 Galatians chapter 1 we're reading from verse 6 Galatians chapter 1 reading from verse 6 it says in verse 6 I marvel that she has so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel this was the deviated, the departed from the heavenly pattern, from the heavenly revelation, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have which we are preached unto you tell me let him be a cost paul the apostle was so sure he said this one came from heaven came from the throne of god in heaven this is the heavenly pattern this is the heavenly revelation and if i myself if i turned around and any of these others turn around like timothy like titus like Silas, like all my companions, any of my companions, if any of them turns around and he preaches any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached, let him be accursed. In verse, in verse 9, as was said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be a cause. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I shall not be the servant of Christ. But I certify your brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. But by the revelation of Jesus Christ. I pray God will keep us faithful. God will keep you faithful. And you'll keep to the word of God the heavenly pattern in Jesus' name. A better, better. Amen. amen. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. We're reading from verse 15. Acts chapter 26, reading from verse 15. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest, but rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of the things which thou hast seen and of the things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God and that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that's in me. Look at this. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. He knew it was a vision from heaven, a pattern from heaven, revelation from heaven. And he said, I wasn't put through in his school in this. The Lord himself revealed this to me. And now you can find all the epistles from Romans to Corinthians to Galatians and to all the other epistles of Paul the Apostle and the epistles of all the other apostles, the revelation, the full revelation the Lord has given us. And then Paul the Apostle said, I kept to that and I have not deviated from that. You will not deviate in Jesus' name. I come into First Timothy chapter six. First Timothy chapter six, verse twenty. O Timothy, keep that 
which is committed to thy trust. That's faithfulness. Keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith, a grace be with you. Chapter 1 of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13. Hold fast the form of sound doctrine which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus, that good sin which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. You'll keep it in Jesus' name. Chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom? Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort without long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own laws shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. They'll get teachers that will say what they put in his mouth. That's not a teacher. That's not a teacher. Somebody comes and then before he comes you put something erroneous in his mouth and he doesn't know better and he's going to spew out the error you put in his mouth. That's not a teacher. He doesn't have backbone. He doesn't have confidence. He doesn't have courage. He doesn't have the un uncompromising spirit. It's a person, it's a puppet in the hands of people that they just say, okay, go and say this, go and say this. And it's not according to the word of God. And the hip hop teachers have been itching ears and they turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Verse 5 But watch thou in all things. Oh, well, watch in all things. Then it says, endure affliction. That is the persecution that comes with the preaching of the word. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. You'll fight a good fight. I said you'll fight a good fight. And that needs backbone. That needs some courage that needs some conviction, that needs some knowledge, that you know that this is the heavenly pattern. And you are presenting that to the congregation. It says, I've fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. You'll keep the faith in Jesus' name. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them that love his appearing. Hebrews chapter 12. In Hebrews chapter 12, we're reading from verse 25. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25. It says in verse 25, See that she refuse not him, that speaketh. He's giving us the word. He's giving us the commission. He's giving us the heavenly pattern. And he has said, you will build the tabernacle. You'll build the ministry. You'll preach the word as it was showed thee on the mount. See, that she reveals not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from tell me heaven from heaven this word it was given to paul the apostle from heaven he looked up and said who are you lord and he said i'm jesus whom you persecute and then he went to proclaim that word and he's reaching that word and we have all the new testament we have all the old testament and he says he's speaking to us from heaven see that you refuse him and not. Verse 28, wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace. You'll have the grace of God. 
the grace to stand and the grace to abide and the grace to continue till the end and the grace to keep on in the very center of the heavenly vision and the heavenly pattern wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our god tell me it's a consuming fire. There's no alternative to the pattern he has given us. He's given us the manual for service. And there is no alternative to the heavenly pattern. This is the only blueprint for ministry. There is no other way to heaven, only the straight, narrow way as revealed by Christ who leads us to heaven. And there is no other doctrine worthy of our attention, no other doctrine worthy of our consideration, only the doctrine of Christ that has the stamp of heaven. There is no other revelation as the ultimate that is beneficial and eternally profitable, but the infallible revelation of the word of God. All human patterns, all human tradition, all modernistic religions, all new age movements, all earthly patterns, all contemporary philosophies of men lead souls to hell. Only the heavenly pattern leads to holiness, leads to heaven, and leads to eternal happiness. And it says, see that you do not refuse. And wherefore, we're receiving this kingdom that will not be moved, that cannot be shaken. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. I pray that all the grace we need to stand by the word he has given us, God will give every one of us that grace in Jesus' name. Did I hear an amen there? Amen. The Lord will give you grace. He'll give you courage. He'll give you backbone. He'll give you the faithfulness and the focus to keep to this heavenly pattern. Let's stand up now and pray for more of the grace of God in our lives so that we'll do the work of God the way God wants it done. And we'll we look at the heavenly pattern and make sure that you do all things, all things, all things according to the pattern that is revealed on the mouth, according to the one that is revealed from heaven. Let's open our mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Oh Lord, help me. Oh Lord, help me. Oh Lord, help me. I don't want to backslide. I don't want to become a false prophet. I don't want to look in any other direction. I want to keep to this word until the very end. The grace of God is available. Come boldly to the throne of grace and the Lord will give you help in the time of need.